This is video problem 4 and uh, this time we consider a configuration of volume charge density and we use Gauss law to determine the electric field intensity. We will also determine the associated electric potential. So here we see our uh, charge configuration uh, of uniform spherical volume charge density. We assume that it's positive and that it has a radius denoted by A. It's located in free space with free space permittivity epsilon naught. The objective is to determine the electric field at an observation point P outside as well as inside of this uh, charge distribution. First we introduce this rectangular XYZ coordinate system so that the origin of our volume charge density coincides with the origin of this coordinate system. Due to the spherical geometry of our charge configuration, we also introduce the associated spherical coordinate system with those coordinates r theta phi. The position of our point inside will be given by those coordinates here, for which uh, the radial coordinate is smaller than or equal to the radius of our uh, volume charge density and for the point outside we use the same coordinates but now in this case radius the radial coordinate will actually of course be greater than or equal to the radius of the volume charge density alternatively we can specify the location of our observation points by this usual position vector. At those points the field will be having a radial component both inside and outside and the magnitude in both cases will only depend on the distance to the observation point. Because of the spherical symmetry of our charge distribution this must necessarily be the case and in fact you can refer to video problem 1 where this was demonstrated in all detail for another spherical uh, symmetric charge distribution, namely that of a point charge. This also means that we can use Gauss law, which is stated here, to determine the electric field. So consider first the case uh, of the observation point inside of our uh, charge distribution. So this is the Gauss law. On the left hand side we have the total flux of the electric field intensity through a closed surface S that is equal to the total charge enclosed by this surface divided with free space permittivity. In this case we introduce this spherical Gaussian surface of radius R and it will have the standard or the usual ds element which is given by the expression here which also work was worked out in detail in video problem one for a similar gaussian surface on the right hand side we have the total charge so we need to find uh, what is the charge enclosed by this gaussian surface this is given uh, by this volume integral of volume charge distribution and we are essentially integrated over the volume, spherical volume, which is bounded by this uh, blue Gaussian surface. That's an integral in phi from 0 to 2 pi, in theta from 0 to pi, and the radius goes from 0, which is at the origin, uh, to the particular radius value of our Gaussian surface. Here we have our volume charge density, and this is the typical uh, differential volume element for our spherical uh, integration volume. The result is given on the right hand side 4 pi divided by 3 times the radius uh, cubed is nothing else than the volume of this sphere which is bounded by our Gaussian surface. And this is multiplied with the volume charge density. It's important to note that as the radius here uh, of our Gaussian surface varies to pick up different observation points from zero uh, to the surface of our volume charge density, then of course that means that also the total charge enclosed as R varies will also vary 
uh, with this radius when we are outside uh, we of course envision uh, another Gaussian surface uh, for these observation points outside of our charge configuration and it's quite obvious uh, to see that uh, the ds element of course for this one is the same as for the previous one and now you can see that this surface will always uh, always enclose the same amount of charge it will namely enclose all of the charge which is contained in our uh, spherical volume charge distribution that charge is given again by this volume integral again phi uh, going from 0 to 2 pi theta going from 0 to pi and now integrating along r from 0 to the radius of your volume charge uh, distribution so this is the result in this particular case so 4 pi over 3 times a cubed is essentially the volume of the whole volume charge uh, distribution that you need to multiply with this volume charge density uh, which is constant so this total charge here is constant with uh, the radial coordinate r, r we now have all the ingredients to determine the electric field intensity we sketch again uh, our Gaussian surface inside as well as outside of our volume charge density this is the electric field and this is the ds element applying for both Gaussian surfaces plugging this into Gauss law will result in this left hand side here so this is a closed surface integral phi going from 0 to 2 pi and theta going from 0 to pi here you see the electric field the vector quantity and your ds element on the right hand side we have the total charge enclosed by the inside gauss surface normalized with free space permittivity and here we have the total charge enclosed by the outside gaussian surface normalized with free space permittivity the left hand side is fairly easy to evaluate the unit vectors are dotted with each other to give unity the electric field and the quantity r squared are constant and can be taken outside and what remains is a factor 4 pi that comes out of the integration so the left hand side is basically the magnitude of the electric field uh, multiplied with the surface area of our gaussian spheres which is 4 pi r squared of course r uh, for the observation point inside goes from 0 to a and outside it goes from a to infinity now you can manipulate these expressions to arrive at the electric field in intensity given by the result here for the inside observation points and the one down here for the observation points outside here the field is directly proportional with the distance to the observation point and outside because we are enclosing a constant amount of charge for all observation points we have this usual one over the distance square dependence so having derived the electric fields for uh, an observation point inside as well as outside of our volume charge distribution we would next like to determine the associated electric potential it is given by the usual expression here where you are actually having a line integral from infinity which is the reference point of zero potential to our uh, observation point of the electric field intensity here we see the uh, electric field uh, intensity it has the radial component and this particular magnitude and in fact we have shown that due to the uh, spherical symmetry the electric field is constant everywhere on this spherical Gaussian surface and also around over here due to this very uh, same spherical symmetry the potential will also be constant at all points on this blue and red uh, surfaces respectively this implies that our uh, p will actually be the distance to the observation point we will move from infinity from the reference point to our observation point here along this red straight part and also along this blue straight 
uh, part to arrive at our observation point. Inside, for both of these parts, the differential length change, which is the differential displacement, is given by this usual expression. For the observation point outside, we are taking this integral from infinity to that particular point of our outside electric field and to arrive at the potential at the inside of our charge configuration, we also integrate from infinity to that particular point. First, we move through the region of the outside field from infinity to A and then from A to that particular point of our interior field. These expressions or integrals are fairly easy to evaluate and we arrive at these final results for the potential inside and the potential outside of our charge distribution. You can note uh, from this expression here that in order to determine the electric potential inside we are using the field outside as well as inside. You might be tempted to determine the potential of uh, an observation point inside of the charge configuration by only using the field inside. And that's of course not true because the potential inside is also very sensitive to what happens outside of the charge configuration. So in problems like those we should always work our way uh, in from the reference point. So we have now completed our tasks uh, in this particular video problem and here you can see uh, the summary of the results and we also as usual have a few tasks for you. We would like you to uh, verify whether the fundamental postulates of electrostatic fields are satisfied by the electric fields that we have derived here. We would also like you to sketch the electric field and the potential as a function of radial coordinate R for a positively charged volume. And we would also like you to verify that the electric field that we have derived is exactly the negative gradient of the derived potential. Thank you very much for your attention.